Hey, how you guys doing? This is William Myers from Manist Outdoors. I've gotten several messages on Facebook and even some on YouTube itself for me to do a bow drill instructional video. And it's about that time um, one of my kids, uh, Ethan and Kevin, they, they need to go through this as well. So might as well film it and showing them how to do the bow drill at the same time. So the way that I teach how to construct and use a bow drill is from stick to fire, pretty much. You know, we have a beautiful piece of cedar here and this is our tender bundle, this is our, our hearth board, our spindle, our bearing block, everything except for the bow. And we'll go harvest one of those really quickly as well, not very hard. So that's one of the things that I see on uh, certain videos and even certain instructors, instruction, blah, blah, blah. three, two, one. You know, something that I see in uh, you know some videos and certain even instruction, instruct, why can't I spit that out? You'll three, get it one day. Two, one. You know, it's something that I see in you know some YouTube videos and even some instructors that uh, I've been personally at their classes. Um, you know, saying, "Well, we gotta go and we gotta find a sycamore for our spindle, and then we're gonna go try to find um, you know poplar for our hearth board, and you know we're gonna make a grab a stone and we're gonna bore it out <laughs> for for a handhold." You know, that's just nonsense in my opinion. You know, in my opinion. The practical application for something like this is if you had to absolutely use something like this, you're you're not going to want to be trying to hunt down seven different kinds of wood for your bow drill. You know, you just need one really good soft wood, poplars, white pines, uh, red pines a little bit too um, resiny for it. White, you know, eight, even white pine. If you get the wrong piece, you're not going to have very good luck. It's just so much resin, but it can't work. Cedars are one of my favorites. Uh, the Cottonwoods and poplar, um, tulip poplar, absolute favorite, you know, but there's a lot of different trees and woods that will work. Even if I don't know exactly what the tree is, if I'm in like on the West Coast and I have no idea what this is, I know, I can know that this is a potential wood that's going to give me uh, a coal just by touching it, feeling it, putting it to my cheek when it's split, putting my fingernail in it. Okay, this is a really soft wood because it leaves real easy fingernail, fingernail dents. You know, I really can just barely even touch that wood and leave a fingernail indent. That's one indication that I'm going to have success, hopefully. So we're going to get the kids involved here. We're going to have them saw this up. I'm going to be showing them how to bust the boards out, carve it up, stuff like that. So let's get to sawing this up and get to making the bow drill. So there's two different ways you can do this. One, you can do it just the way it is. You can hold it just like this. And you can saw it, or you can use a plumber's vise, which is kind of crouching and doing it. How do you want to do it? Plumber's vise is like this. And then you saw. Um, I'll try out the plumber's vise and see that. All right. Come this way. All right, hold the wood. Put it between, exactly, just like that. And now you're going to be squeezing it with your leg and then holding it against your leg, tight against your leg. And I want, probably Kyle, I would get over mm -hmm. here this way. And then I want probably about right there. You got it. Right here? Down a little bit more to that knot. All right, that'll work. That'll work. Yep. Stop. Take your hand up a little more. Right there. Okay. Don't let the tool do the work. Just go back and forth. Don't push. Use the whole saw. It's there to use all of it. Might as well use it. You got it. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Good job, son. All right. Let go. And I'm going to kind of give you a couple pointers here. All right. So when you're sawing, you don't want, like I said, you don't want to be pushing down. We need we need about like this because we could probably bust a, a bearing block out of that piece, but I'll just saw this just because to show you. You know, to start it, 
And I'm not pushing. I'm just letting the saw do the work. You know? I'm using the, all the saw that I can right to the very tip. Oh. Just like that. That was right. way better than me. <laughs> all right. It's all right. All right, so like I said, this is going to be our bow drill set. It's also going to be part of our tinder bundle. Okay, the cedar bark is awesome for um, tinder, especially for a bow drill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of my knife, and I'm just going to scrape down, and I'm going to harvest that cedar bark. I can even kind of go down this way as well. A little, yeah. But I'm going to do that all the way around. You can even do it with the back of that saw that Ethan was using. But this whole, the whole piece that we harvested is going to be used for our bow drill. Alright, so we'll do that with all the pieces that we sawed. And then I'll give this to you guys to kind of work into a tinder bundle, okay? Alright, so this is the piece that I'm pretty sure that I want for my hearth board. All I have to do is really just look at it, see where the heartwood is, and then kind of punch it out. You know, I don't want to do anything like this with an axe. You know, people are like, why would I baton a knife? This is one of the reasons. I want a specific cut out of this wood. All right, so this is my heart. It's not, in my opinion, ideal. There's a lot, more, a lot more heartwood in there that I would normally get. So now this next step that I would do is probably clean up this wood, this board. So what I would do is what uh, I use plenty. And that's why I like a nice straight edge knife because I can sit here and plane out this board and get a flat surface really quickly. Get a nice straight flat board. Flip it around. And do the other side. Love cedar. Smells great. All right, flip it around. Do the same thing. Got a couple hard knots on one side. Get those nice and planed out. Pass that knot. Okay, so most of the time I carry two knives, and a lot of people ask me why. Uh, the Sotheby's especially was designed for a companion knife, so this is one of the reasons why. Little small details, minute details. I probably could do this with a Sotheby's, no problem, but I like to have a smaller knife just to do little cleanup jobs like this. Just clean that board up. Get it nice and squared, ready to collect coal. Some of the other smaller details, stuff like cutting notches and stuff like that, could more than adequately be done with a sow piece. It's faster and a little bit more efficient, 
with a smaller blade that I can get in here and rock back and forth and do the real fine detail. There we go. All right, there we go. That's something that should be fine. It's not tested yet. It's not proven yet, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is going to make my spindle. And, you know, if I had a little bit of a bigger piece, I could have cut my board out and got a spindle out of that same piece. A little bit smaller than that, you know, we'll have to go section by section. But what I want is something that goes from my elbow to pretty much my wrist, like this. Even a little bit longer if it come up to here, that's just as fine, and it's fine to me. You don't want your spindle to be too big because then it'll be a little unwieldy. You won't be able to lock it in as well. You don't want it too small because you, know, you want it to be about this size because once it's running on the drill or on the hearth board, you'll be able to lock your leg in just like this or lock your arm in, sorry, your wrist tightly to your shin and you still, you're not, you know, hunched over too much. You're not trying to struggle to control it, things like that. So let's go ahead and construct our spindle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work around this to get a rough shape and then I'll take uh, this knife kind of do some crafting chops to get more of a rough shape and then some slicing to get that final spindle out. Obviously, all this stuff can be used for the uh, the actual fire that you're going to be making. It's not like you're going to discard all that nice fresh cedar. So now what I'm going to do is just some light chopping getting the basic design that I want out. One thing that I see some people do that leads to a lot of failure is they think of a spindle and they get this thing just perfectly round. You don't want that. You want some asymmetrical, like maybe a hexagon kind of shape going on. Something for the rope to kind of grab onto. Alright, so that's my basic shape. 
Then we're gonna get some you know, more precise slicing out of this and uh, go make our bearing block and find a boat. All right, so let's get these fine slices out of here, right where we want them. Nice little knot up there, knock out. All right, so now this is the end basic shape of my spindle. This is my spindle. Now I just have to contour both ends. And what I need to make a decision right now is what side is gonna be on the actual hearth and what side is gonna be in the bearing block. You want kind of a, a round nose tip on that, on the side that's gonna be on the hearth. And I want pretty much a pencil point on the other because I want less friction in the bearing block and more friction friction on the hearth. So I'm going to be rounding this over and what I do is I start about an inch right here, start going around, following the previous lines pretty much that I already made, but I need to take a couple swipes out of a piece that's a little oblong, that's fine. And once I'm satisfied with that, then I'll move up about a half inch, start taking slices from that. You can already see where this is going start to see that nose being round. And usually when I'm this far, I'll take about two passes and then I'll start moving up even more. And now I'm pretty much at the final part where I'll start knocking the tip off. And there you go. So this is another key to this as well, is if you see all these indents right here, it's almost like a soccer ball. That just grabs that wood and starts grinding it and starts heating it up together. We'll go through that here in a second. And that's really pretty much it. That's all that I need is something that I can hold on to and have that spindle in here. Now the one drawback to this is, you know, this is all the same components. This, your bearing block, it is beneficial to have it maybe out of a little bit harder wood because this is as soft as the other stuff and you know, your spindle is gonna drill up in here and it might shoulder out, give you some problems, but I know how to deal with that as well. So all I really do is just take my knife and this is one of the key design features of this knife is the spear point making really symmetrical holes. Now let's get in there and drill a nice hole, something that's going to accept the opposite end of that spindle. You know what, this doesn't look like the safest thing, safest thing in the world, but you know I'm not applying 
a great deal of pressure at all. I'm doing real light pressure, just busting that hole out. All right, there we go. All right, so, you know, this time of year, you're not really gonna find too much, but like uh, plants, like common mallow, uh, sassafras, things like that are real mucilogenic. It's real easy to put those leaves into your bearing block, and that's gonna give you some lubricant up here. So like I said, you want very little, if any at all, friction up here. You want all your friction to be down here. But, you know, we can use maybe some something from our bag maybe we're using tool maintenance such as like a deer fat tallow perfect you know even spit just spit in the thing you know it, it, some people don't know but like uh around your nose and behind your ear it's high like body oils and things like that you can even rub that in there you know anything to get a little bit of lubricant into that hole right there so you have as little friction as possible up here you know, uh, this will do for a bow. It's flexible, but it's not too flexible. I might want something a little bit thicker, but we're kind of losing daylight, and I want to get this video done and show them how to actually run on the board. So what I do is I put my potential bow into my armpit, and then I extend my fingers. At the point of my index finger, that's where I want to cut. And I'll just take this and run it around three, four times. A little chilly out here, everybody's sniffling. God damn it. After I break that through to a couple of layers of the stick itself, put my knife away. And then I'll be able to get a clean break by going up down, left and right. Take, clean that up a little bit. All right, so that's pretty much my bow. That'll work. All right, so the next step is to mark the top and bottom. And all I'll do is just like fever to it. So I'll go around just like this. And I don't want to go too deep. I just want something so my rope doesn't slip up and down. So just beaver chew on one side. Go around once or twice, and then flip the stick and do it on the other side. And there we go. That's just going to give me something that the rope's going to hang in. Give me an anchor point basically. I'll do the same thing on the other side and we'll get right back to you. All right, so we're ready to string this up. What I do is I kind of put the bow into my lap a little bit, bring the string up, around, into the notch and under, and then give that bow just a little bit of flex and tighten it up. Do the same thing, under, and this will flex. I'll probably have to take this apart and uh, flex it, tighten it up. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, ready to, you know, the, the, the stick itself is going to loosen and the nylon itself is going to stretch so, just a little bit of adjustments that need to happen. That's good. That'll be good. For now, that'll be alright. I'll just put a, a clove hitch in. That'll work. All right, so now we have to decide which side of the board that we're gonna run on. And one of the tips that I use is make sure that whatever side of the board that you're running on, you always make your hole 
as close to your foot as possible on this side of the board. You don't want to make it down here because if your foot's going here and you make your hole here, if by chance we do have a failure, we're going to have to move down the board. And so now we're going to have to move where your foot was and more likely your foot's going to be damp and wet and now that's going to majorly increase our chances of failing on our next hole. So make a space right there, put your hole, start your hole right about there. And I think uh, I think we're gonna be good. All right, so I know where my hole's gonna go. I'm gonna go back on the board about two thirds of an inch. And I'm gonna start that hole. I'm just gonna get something that my spindle is gonna sit in and ride in because the spindle itself is what's gonna make the hole. I'm just making it easy on myself right now by giving that spindle some a hole to ride in. All right, so that's almost done. Again, just taking the spear point of that knife, just knocking a tiny little hole in the wood just like that. Now we're gonna burn in, we're gonna cut a notch, and then we'll be ready to see what this bow drill set can actually do. Okay, so now we're ready to burn in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give ourselves as much chances for success as we possibly can, which means I'm not gonna let this spindle touch the damp ground. I'm not gonna sit it down and let it soak up water from the ground or anything like that. If, if I need to, I'm gonna put this in my pocket whenever I possibly can. Same thing with the hearth board. I'm gonna set it on leaves. I'm not gonna let the, even the bottom of the hearth board soak up any water, moisture, anything like that. You know, it might not affect it, it might affect it. But with something like this, if I absolutely am down to using a bow drill, I want everything to be in my advantage. And my, uh, you know, I'm gonna set myself up for success as much as I possibly can. All right, so now it's time to get this spindle in here and see what's happening with this set. This is one of my key indicators on if I'm going to have success or not. It's just by burning in. Because if I see nice black smoke, nice black dust, you know, it's going to give me a good sign that we're going to have success. So I'm just burning in. I don't want to go too crazy with it. I think we're going to be okay. Nice black dust. I'd like it to be a little bit blacker than that. But again, I think we're going to be okay. Don't need to save it. Some people say you do. I don't. Alright, so now we burnt in. I'm going to get a little, a little closer to the camera. You see how we, you know, kind of contoured that tip. I want that, I want to reshape that really quickly. You know, I want to get some fresh wood on that spindle. I want to bust those shoulders that I put in there. And again, this is just giving me every option for a successful run as possible. It might seem mundane to some people, but you know, the little tiny things in a bow drill will cause you to have failure. Um, when I do this, I'm also inspecting I don't want to see any cracks, splits, anything like that. This is real smooth, nice. I think we're going to be able to get this. All right, so now we're ready to cut our notch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to do a V. And we're going to, the key to this, one of the key things that I tell everyone is try to cut that V one quarter of the way into your hole and as tight as possible. You want it to be as tight as V as absolutely possible. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's another reason why I like to carry, you know, smaller knives for stuff like this. Because I can really eyeball and get in there and see where I want to cut that notch. Right about there. Yeah, be all right. 
All right, so one of the other things that I do is I bore out this, and that allows for dust to collect and gather a little bit bigger of an ember, and it also allows air to get to it more rapidly. I just take a piece of the cedar bark, cut it just like that, and that will give me a tray for my dust to collect and also for me to knock the ember out. We'll also have a leaf underneath this as well. That just gives me a stable platform to remove that ember and then place it into a tender bundle. All right, so we're gonna lay a leaf down and we're also gonna lay our piece of cedar bark and our hearth is going to go right on top of that cedar bark. Just like that. Now we're ready to see what we got. Alright, so I had the kids busting down all that cedar bark and a little bit extra stuff that I brought with me as well. Uh, they did a pretty good job. Uh, they probably busted down a little bit more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of contour this into a bird's nest. And I don't want to pack it too tight. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of be loosening it up and just spinning it around in my hands just like this. Some clumps there I'll kind of even out and then keep spinning it. And what I'm looking for is for the bottom of the bird's nest to be a little on the thin side. So when I'm blowing I'm passing the air through it completely. And we're just about to where I'm going to call this good. Just like that. So that's going to give me something to put my ember into and then pick up and then blow through it gently at first. And then I'll be able to squeeze this, kind of taco it a little bit, bring it up, breathe again through it. I want the air passing this while I bring it up into the air is because I want the oxygen to be running through it and up. The heat's going to be rising through the tender bundle, bringing this tender bundle to combustion. This real, just when I start out, I can't be blown on this thing hard. <clears throat> and that's one of the hard parts of this, is that once you guys get done, you're going to be winded. Because you're going to be giving it your all. So you just kind of, kind of, you got time, let the coal kind of congeal and redden up. You'll see it kind of glowing. <sighs> Breathe, get your breath, relax, take a deep couple deep breaths, put it in your tender bundle. And then we're going to slowly breathe and maybe even just kind of rock back and forth and get wind on it just like this. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to show you guys how to do this, okay? And then slowly pick it up and then bring it up like this, allowing, you know, see my hands, how they open up, allow the air to go through it, and you'll start hearing that jet. It'll sound like a jet engine. It's just, and then you'll, you'll hear it start to warm up and just, then you'll start seeing yellow smoke. Once you start seeing that, game on, you're pretty much good to go. So let's get to it. All right, so one of the biggest important thing about the bow drill is form, okay? How I run the bow drill, all right? Now, like I tell all my students, everybody's different, everybody's gonna do this different. Try to copy the form that I use as much as possible, but make it comfortable for you. If you're uncomfortable, just that's not right, okay? So I'm gonna step on the board, but I want the arch of my foot as close to that hole as possible. And the reason why is when I put my spindle into the hole, I want it to follow my shin as straight as possible. Again, the reason why is because when I lock my wrist in, that means the spindle is going to be as straight as possible, contouring to my shin. And another thing that that does is it allows me to push my body back or forward or side or side. If I see coal or dust rather, like maybe dumping on the top part where I don't want it to, I can push forward and that will start to kick that dust into the notch where I want it to. Okay, so right. let's give this a shot, see what happens.
right, so I lay that there. All right, so other than having my leg right here, I put my knee right behind this heel, just like this, okay? See? And then I kick that foot over, okay? That basically tripods my body out so I'm really stable, okay? And that allows me, one, I'm stable. Two, I don't have my knee out here, so I have, you know, a straight path to run my bow drill, okay? All right. See what we get. Now I'm gonna start out really slow, make sure I'm locked in real good. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just warming that spindle up into the hardboard. Both of them are warming up right now. You can, it's a feel, it's a hearing thing. I can start to hear that cohesion. Everything's starting to heat up. See that smoke? I'm starting to get coal dumping. I'm gonna start to give a little bit of downward pressure and a little bit faster. I want to use all my bow. Once I see that notch filling up completely, I'm going to crank it. to fail but you see all this dust that we have yep. just keep it something that always works even though I've done this thousands of times don't always get success why do you not want that point so I want this as flat as possible for the most friction as possible might squeak but again if it does squeak and it'll start warming up you start to hear that squeak go away Time. I'm not panicking, freaking out or anything. Just want to baby it. Can I put it in there a little bit? Hang on. Right. Don't want that cold to go out.
the light. Some nice rape. They choose bait. You a little smoke? Nope. Oh, that was really close to your face. Burn your eyebrows. It's gonna be the first one to be the last time. Rub the. No, it's alright. Right. And now from here, when you're adding your tender or your, your kindling, you're probably gonna have to get in here. If this starts to kind of get low, mm. you're gonna have to get in here. You baby it, breathe in it. Keep it going to get your other kindling up to temperature and get that stuff combusting. Yeah. You guys got some really big stuff. You guys should have got maybe a little bit smaller stuff. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I should have. I should have watched what you guys were collecting. This is a little too on the uh, kind of big side. You guys needed a lot smaller than this, but that's okay. No big deal. It's your first time. I was busy making the bow drone stuff. Here we go. We got something coming. You know, the point of this persistence, even though you guys should have got like this stuff right here, like pencil lead, this whole bundle should have been this size. I wasn't really paying attention to what you guys were gathering, so it's kind of my fault. But even though I don't have exactly a perfect condition right now, I'm persistent, I'm keeping up with it. I'm not giving up. I need this fire, so I'm keep going, keep going, keep going, never give up. You want some of the shavings for it? Sure. Now we got something that's alive. 
it's eating, it's going. Some cedar on there. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to pile, oh, I got flame, and I start just piling stuff on here. You know, I want to let this breathe. I want to let it eat. Because if you just pile stuff on it, it'll take away it. the oxygen. Baby it, it'll nurse it. it. Yep. You know, if, if we had this whole pile that was nothing but these little tiny sticks, we'd have a, a good, sustainable fire going. But we're, we're nursing it. We're working with what we have. We'll get it going. Now here's the thing. Uh, now that you guys seen all this and seen this go from stick to fire, you get to sleep on it. And then in the morning, you two get to do it all. We're going to go get more cedar. We have eastern red cedar right over there. You guys get to do every single thing that I just did tomorrow morning. <laughs> And so, we're really, really, really going to have to nurse this. This is, like I said, like my, when, I, when I said get, go gather pencil lead type stuff, this is like where, pretty much what I meant. Because we got a bunch of, you know, pencil size. It was all wet back then. Thumb That's size. Yeah. That's okay. Like I said, this is just to teach you guys. You guys have seen me start fires a million times. So, you know, as far as this process goes, you guys have seen it a million times. But... We'll get this fire going, get some uh, get some food rolling, go to bed, wake up, get to it in the morning. And here's another little secret. I'll probably burn that bow drill, that complete bow drill set that I just made. I'm gonna burn it. No cheating. <laughs> Alright guys, see It's not exactly what I'd call sustainable yet But Just from that troublesome little fire That had Wood that was a little bit too big Gave me a heck of a time You know, just keep at it I kept at it, I kept at it, I didn't give up And now we have something that's starting to grow <coughs> Something that's going to be taking about pencil size wood keep feeding it keep letting it eat and get something a little bigger on it and then eventually we're gonna pro uh, progress up to you know wrist thumb and wrist size wood stuff like that then we can start cooking once we have a nice cold bed hey how you guys doing this is William Myers Mass Outdoors and I've been getting Several messages on three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna get the kids to not die. <laughs> we're gonna get the kids to.